my friends, and welcome once again to another episode of Tony's Comfort Kitchen, the home of comfort food. Right, uh, I've been making quite a few uh, curry videos uh, lately on my channel, um, and I make you one again today. Now, I'm, I'm making no apologies for that, because this curry is, is slightly different. Um, for the start off, it doesn't actually come from India. Well, it sort of does in a roundabout way. It comes from South Africa. Uh, in fact, it comes from the city of Durban on the East Coast, where there is a, a large population of, uh, of Indian immigrants. So they obviously started making curries there. Uh, and the other thing that's slightly different about this compared to other curries is the manner in which it is served. Uh, it is served, in fact, in a hollowed out loaf of bread. Or in this case, a very small um, hollowed out loaf of bread. I'll go into that later. So this dish is called a bunny chow uh, and if this whets your culinary appetite then we can uh, hop along and uh, cook it. <laughs> that sounded terrible. <laughs> okay we'll start off by putting about two tablespoons of vegetable oil in the frying pan. Uh, now as per usual I will I'll Introduce the ingredients as I put them in the uh, the pan, uh, and I will also put them a list of them in the description below. So if you want to uh, follow along, uh, then uh, please feel free to take a look down below. Okay, so I'll start off by putting one uh, chopped up onion, medium-sized onion, in the pan. I'll just cook those down. On the medium heat, I will add some salt, a pinch of salt. Okay, with the uh, the onions becoming translucent, I will add one, two teaspoons of ginger and garlic paste. Now I made this paste very easily, and if you want to know how to do it. Uh, I will put a video, sorry, a link to the video at the very end of, of this video, so you can go and take a look. Um, if you don't want to do that, it's the equivalent of about four or five cloves of garlic and a thumb-sized piece of ginger uh, sliced up. I'll let those cook in slightly, and then we'll put in the spices. And the spices are one teaspoon of cumin seeds, one teaspoon of ground coriander, uh, the seeds of six cardamom pods. Uh, I always say I never like to use the, the pods in the uh, sorry, in the uh, uh, curries. I don't like to get them in my mouth, so I always take the seeds out. You do what you want. One teaspoon of turmeric. and one good teaspoon of hot chilli powder. Let those spices cook in and then we will add the uh, tin tomatoes. Okay, there's a wonderful, there's a wonderful aroma coming off these spices. Um, so I put in 400 gram tin of chopped tomatoes, as I said. And again, we'll let that cook in like uh, anything else. Let it cook down a little bit before adding the, um, the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so it's time to put in <coughs> the, uh, the meat that we're using. Uh, now I've got 400 grams of diced chicken here. Uh, now I think, to be honest, the, the traditional recipe for the bunny chow uh, uses uh, lamb. But guess what? I didn't have any. Um, but I'm sure, like any Indian curries, whether they come from South Africa or anywhere else, you can uh, you can change the ingredients for <laughs> for different uh, different things. So I'm sure chicken is widely used too. Um, so, I'll just crank up the heat a bit. Just 
let that cook in a little bit and then I'll add uh, some water. I think, you know, it's called bunny chow. I don't assume they use rabbit in it. <laughs> I think the bunny comes from the bread being a bun, I presume. Um, but anyway, you can put in rabbit if you want. You can put in lamb or you can put in chicken. The choice is yours. Okay, that chicken's been in for a couple of minutes now. I will, I've got 500 millilitres of water here, but I'm not gonna use it all straight away. 300 millilitres and I'll save 200 back for uh, the next ingredient. Um, so we'll just let this simmer away for about half an hour or so until the the chicken is, uh, is getting cooked through uh, and then I say we'll add the next ingredient. Okay so while that's cooking away I will uh, hollow out this uh, loaf of bread. Um, basically just cut out the interior which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, <clears throat> And while I'm doing that, maybe I should explain why this loaf is so small. Um, I'm sure you, we've all seen these things on the internet where people have ordered something that they that they thought was uh, an absolute bargain, uh, but then on receiving it, it was about half the size it should have been. <laughs> whether it's a car or whether it's whatever it is, um, and I feel that I was. This is what happened to me. Uh, I ordered a, a loaf tin, um, one of these ones that make sandwich loaves. So it's got a little lid on it, so the the bread comes, you know, it's sort of cube-like. Um, but I actually figured it was going to be about twice the size. <laughs> uh, and clearly, it's uh, not very big, but it's fine. Actually, that is is fine for for this this um, meal. It's good for one person, I think. Uh, however, the, uh, the amount of curry I'm making is for two. So, uh, if you've made something like this, you better, the same mistake as me, then uh, you might have to make two of these <laughs> if you're having it with two people, or just forget the whole process and buy a large sandwich loaf and cut it in two. I think that would be the, uh, the preferred idea, actually. <laughs> anyway, that's the, the bread hollowed out. And uh, it is ready for the curry whenever it's uh, whenever it's ready. Okay, so this has been cooking for half an hour, just, just shy of half an hour. Um, now then, I'm not um, suggesting that it is is, is an authentic uh, bunny chow curry, but bunny chow is a curry, and this is a curry, so <laughs> it's good enough for me. Um, but one ingredient that I've noticed that seems to always be in. A bunny chow is potato. So uh, I've got some some raw potato here. This is one medium potato, uh, chopped up to about the same size pieces as the as the chicken. So I'm gonna stick those in. So mix them into the curry. We'll add some more water. As soon as they're done, we should be done. But just before I, I finish off, I'll put some more. I'll put some garam masala in towards the end. Uh, I won't put it in yet because if you know me, my curries, I always like to put the garam masala in at the very end, just because because I can. So in goes the 200 millilitres of that 500 that we started out with. Uh, and if it feels I need to add any more, I can do. But hopefully, 500 should be enough. Right, let's get back up to temperature, so I will add some chopped coriander, fresh coriander, and then I'll leave some back and we'll, we'll sprinkle it over at the end. Okay, they've been cooking for 15 minutes now. Just tested the potatoes and they are cooked. So we'll add the final ingredients, <clears throat> which are two freshly chopped, sorry, two fresh chopped 
chilies. Uh, one teaspoon, as I said earlier, of the garam masala. And a good pinch, squeeze of the kasuri meti, or the fenugreek leaves, dried fenugreek leaves. Now then, are these ingredients supposed to be in a, in a bunny chow? I have no idea, but they are in mine, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, oh, there's one other, rest, uh, one other item I want to put in uh, with this, which I've just decided upon. And that is, I just fancied it, a little bit of cream. Oop, good here, making rather rude party noises. Uh, what, having a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Just to lighten it up a bit. We'll just let that heat through and uh, um, we'll, be, we'll be good to go. Uh, the reason why I put the red chilies in at the very end is because I like to have a little bit of uh, freshness to them still rather than just sort of cooked, you know, gone soft in the, in the curry. I like to have a little bit of crunch and um, I don't know, I think they seem to retain the, the freshness of the heat. Okay, my friends, that's it. I'll switch the heat off, and my bunny is ready to chow. <laughs> okay, my friends. This is a very, very special, different dish, uh, and I'm really looking forward to trying it. Um, now then, I'll start off with a bit of potato, which is perfectly cooked. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Chicken. Mm. Oh, cream, that cream. Really made it. Now then, apparently, a real bunny, as they, as they do call it in uh, South Africa, it's meant to be eaten with your hands, but so I might try and give it a go. The whole thing's <laughs> don't slide off the plate. The whole thing is very hot, so uh, not the bread, but the curry. Mmm, mm. what? Mmm, that is good. Mm. Fantastic. Oh, give it a go. It is. Um, it's unique, it's different. Um, uh, I mean, normally, you know, you'd have a curry with with the uh, rice and an arm bread, say. Well, here you're having the carbohydrates, excuse me, just the same, with um, potato. And instead of an arm bread, it's, uh, it's a sandwich loaf. <laughs> but uh, ooh, uh, very tasty, it is. Um, and it's apparently bunnies. Because I'm in the know, as I say, they're served with, as you can see it, salad. Not really good. I'll show you that. Served along the salad, apparently. So, uh, you know, they can be healthy. Uh, <laughs> you get any carbohydrates, you get any protein, you, it's got everything, it's got a lot. You've even got a smile on your face when you eat it. So, there you go. Anyway, I would love you to give this a go if you haven't done so already. And if you do, Please, please, please let me know in the comments below uh, what you think. And uh, please like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I shall see you in the next video. So from Bunny and me, peace and love my friends, peace and love.